What's up, everyone, and Happy New Year. In this podcast, James and I talk about the overall economy, the Fed, and share some stories about our trading. As well, we also talk about large caps. This was a really great podcast, so listen up, stick around, and enjoy. And also, let us know in the comments what topics you would like to see covered or how you felt about this one. Um, Another thing is that uh, in the comments below, there's a discount off an MIC membership if you're interested in something like that. So thanks a lot, guys. A Happy New Year, and I hope you enjoy this one. What's going on, guys? We're back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Um, It seems like every week there's some craziness going on in the macro world. Uh, and in small cap world nowadays. Uh, So we're going to talk a little bit about everything. So the first thing I wanted to touch on, um, I think an important announcement came up from the Federal Reserve uh, last week, and that was that they have basically come forward and said they do not plan on lowering rates in 2023. Yeah. If anything, they they will still uh, increase rates. Uh, the the you know the jury's out on whether it's a quarter point raises or half a point or whatever. But I think it's obvious that right now, uh, Jerome Powell feels like we're losing to inflation. I think he gets very aggravated in his tone, and you can tell when people get excited when the stock market has good days. He doesn't want, I in my opinion, he doesn't want the stock market to have good days. He wants wealth to be crushed. And he wants people, he said in the beginning, this is going to hurt and people need to feel this and they will. Yeah. I kind of think that's where we're headed. But what do you think right now? Oh, well, I mean, it's exactly what like a couple of weeks ago on the podcast, I was like, um, you know, they came out and said, oh, we might pause. We might do this. We might do that. Now we're sitting here beginning of 2023. And uh, yeah. They're just completely saying the opposite of what they said in like uh, November, December, how they might pause, how they might go a little bit easier, how they might, uh, you know, even uh, look at, you know, basically decreasing rates. Like they've even like talked about that before. And now we're in a situation where they're like, yeah, we're not going to do any of that. Um, (laughs) Sorry, I'm just popping. Still sick. I got COVID. So um, bear with me. But uh yeah, I mean, it's exactly what they they said, you know, that they weren't going to do. Of course, you can't trust them. So to yeah. me, it's like it's like whatever they say, you have to take with like a, a grain of salt, really. Okay. And I think a lot of people were really, really optimistic, thinking like, oh, you know, they might even decrease rates. They might pull back. You know, there's no way that that's going to happen. So yeah. um, it's exactly what I, I would have thought happened. And what's kind of crazy, though, is that like the market had, like like you said, it was like a 700 point day today. It's like almost like the market took that news and spit it out and didn't really digest it. I kind of feel like people almost don't believe it. Um, And I think it's going to I think it's going to have a trickle down effect on a lot of people. So anyone who bought a house in 2022 uh, and had an abnormally high interest rate for the time, you know, six to seven percent. Like I know a lot of people who bought, bought houses in that range for interest. I think they had the theory that they would be able to refinance in 23 and that would allow them to maintain their payments and bring, maybe bring down the high payments that they thought they could survive on for a while. And now they're kind of finding out they're not. So I think it's going to trickle down into not only the housing uh, market, also business, because you can't refinance debt. Companies that who have large debt, um, they're going to continue with large interest payments, just like our country, for example. And we have large interest payments and with high uh, we have large debt payments with high interest. It's it's not going to be pretty for a lot of people. Um, you know, I think it's something to remember that is interesting is that we're, we're probably going to enter, if not already entered a time into a severe recession or depression. Um, companies, large caps are every day announcing layoffs, 10% cuts um, coming daily. And these are big companies. You know, these are Amazon, Facebook, or Meta, you know, Apple, like all these companies. And I think that, we have to remember that stocks don't necessarily have to go down in a recession. Um, you know, we, we might find a bottom and we might have already bottomed in a lot of names. I mean, you yeah. know, I don't know what you think, but man, some of these stocks have been just absolutely murdered. And how can you not look at an Amazon that slammed down to 82 today? I mean, I had to take some in my long account in my long-term account because I'm in my head. I'm like, it, it's, it's Amazon. You know I mean? Yeah. We're, we're getting to a point. They've been crushed. Yeah, no, I think it's, uh, I think in some names, there has been a bottom, you know, 
obviously a uh, stock like Meta is very unpredictable because like, you know, if you look at Netflix, like, and I was reading this the other day, like their earnings were not that bad, you know, like compared to like, if this had have happened in like a market like two years ago, you know, it probably would have rallied, you know, would have kept going up. Like it wasn't like they got hit that hard, but you know, it's just the market environment that we're in. Um, a company like Meta, where they're trying to like transition to like the metaverse and do all this shit, um, that's a little bit more unpredictable. It's a little bit more like uncharted territory. Um, obviously, they own Instagram, so like they'll be fine. But you know, it's still very, very uncharted territory. Like going into all that like metaverse shit, you know. And also, you look at Twitter. Uh, Elon Musk got his first margin call on his loan, which is like you know, crazy, but Twitter is also a stock that has gotten murdered as well. And I saw you were talking about it today in chat and you were like, I love Elon. I love Elon Musk, but as far as Tesla stock, it's like, I don't know how far, you know, this can go up. So there are a lot of things going on right now. It's definitely like a weird market where, it is. you know, you see Google getting hammered, Amazon getting hammered, all these tickers getting hammered. And it's like, these are really, really good companies, but um, and obviously some of the names have bought them, but I think for the most part, it's still like super uncharted territory, you know, it's like, has this yeah. really bottomed, you know, everything looks good in hindsight, but when you see companies start to lay people off and start to say that they're preparing for a recession, and you have people like us who are like, you know, even this summer we were talking about it, we're like, we're probably in a recession right now, or like at least close to one, you know, if they're predicting for like the almighty recession that like, even when we were talking about like like this summer, like when we were talking about a recession, if they're predicting something bigger than that, worse than that, if they're predicting like a catastrophic tsunami, then I mean that that would be just insane, you know? Yeah. I think a couple of things I want to touch on that you said. So first, like with Meta and Facebook, I, I think at this point, and this is just my opinion. I think Meta has taken its medicine. I think they've been beaten down so hard. Um, Mark Zuckerberg came out and said that he, you know, he made a mistake. He invested um, capital in the wrong way. Uh, I mean, it, it caused them to have their first layoff in, you know, almost, you know, 15 years of being open or whatever, or being established. Um, and I think that the metaverse just didn't necessarily, I think he will be, but I thought a lot about this and I think it will be successful. I just think he's a little bit early. I think that he knows it too, that maybe trans, you know, transforming Facebook into this metaverse company was a little too soon. Um, and it's going to hurt the shareholders and the stock price. But at the end of the day, he is also Mark Zuckerberg and he's not an idiot. And I think that he has vision and he's very smart. So I think long term, I think Meta might have taken its, like I said, taken its medicine. It might be uh it's a, it's a, in my opinion, it's always a long term buy, but that's just how I it's feel. Medicine, bro. <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> it, the it, fucking suicide bill. That's what it was. They had the cyanide pill. He took it. They murdered the stock, and now you know it's time to fix it. And you know what they did? They leaned out. They cut costs, and now they have a new business with a new business model. And well, I guess we'll see how smart he really is. You know. So, and then as far as Elon goes, it's the same thing. I was talking in chat, right? It's like. There comes a point where I love the guy. So I love Elon and I really support his vision. And again, he's a product guy. And I think that as long as he focuses on the product, I think Tesla, Twitter and SpaceX and Solar City will continue to thrive. The issue is I feel like it's easy for him to get distracted. I feel like Twitter, he needs to find a CEO that's going to take over and actually take that responsibility from him because yeah. I think is a business there. And I think he's smart enough to create a product that will actually make it successful, make it generate revenue and actually make it something that globally people will love to use. Um, so again, though, the problem is we're seeing Tesla touch a hundred today. I mean, yeah. once that, once that goes, the floodgates open, you know, we'll see 90, 80 possibly. Um, I already know in my head and maybe I'm shooting myself in the foot. I, in my, I've said, if Tesla goes down to $80 a share, I'm going to buy um, I'm going to start putting some out there just because again, I, I choose to believe in the long-term vision of Elon Musk and I, and I like it. So, and also I'm just a user of all the products. I, I drive a Tesla, I use Twitter. Um, I love SpaceX and what they do. So, I mean, I'm not using any rocket ships these days, but, um, other than that, I think recessionary talks, like what you were mentioning, I'm noticing it now, uh, especially in the, uh, labor fields like it, like cutting hair barbering and stuff i noticed yeah. i live in a nice town both our locations are in wealthy towns um and you know people are tipping less 
um, you know, they're still coming in. We offer a cash discount and I've noticed like a lot more people doing that. It's only like three bucks, but you know what? It's three bucks. Um, I've started to notice more and more people complaining about the cost of goods, food, gas, everything. Um, and I feel like it's hitting a tipping point where most of my friends and most people I know who just working just average jobs are, they're not even breaking even anymore. They might be actually operating at a negative, uh, a negative or even a lot, you know, some sort of loss at the end of the month after bills. Yeah, yeah, that's so funny, bro. <laughs> How you worded that? I feel bad for your friends, but you're like, hey, maybe, it is. hey, maybe it's... off operating at a loss, like that's, well, that's what, right. It's like <laughs> I know it's like wording it really robotically, but it's like you know, if you make five hundred bucks a week, right, which is like yeah. the average, the average person, if you make a thousand fifty six thousand a year, you're making a thousand dollars a week after taxes. Call it six hundred. You know, eighteen six like twenty four hundred a month. I mean, after your rent, your car payment, your bills, your food, like you're probably negative. Yeah. You know, you're dipping into your credit card. I don't know if you know people, but most people I know do this. They don't make enough money in their paycheck. So what they do is they put it on their credit card, then they get paid. So they pay down their credit card, but then they just go back to having to use the credit card. But slowly that balance creeps up because yeah. not only are they just putting their, their needs on there, they're putting some of their wants. So yeah. they go out and buy that nice item and then that adds to the balance. So now when they get that 500 to put up, to pay off the card, now it's only down to 200 bucks. Yeah. Balance, you know, so I don't know if you know people like that or what's your experience uh, right now? Oh, with people- yeah. My experience is I have a couple different, I have a couple different types of friends. So it's, it's interesting. Like I have you guys who are like the fucking uh, normal, like the normal, like finance bros, you know, um, I have other friends that are, <laughs> I know some that are still like living at home. Um, some are definitely doing the uh, good old credit card trick. I know a lot of guys like that. And honestly, one of my friends has gone bankrupt as well. Straight up my age, you know, like 23, 22, just because he's like, there's no way out of this. Like got a I nice mean, car too like, quick. What did he do? I bought a BMW um, and just basically like kind of had a bit of a drinking problem and uh, maxed out like four, four thousand dollar credit cards or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, fuck, there's no way out of this. So then he just went bankrupt or whatever. Um, Mm -hmm. And yeah, a lot of my friends here have just moved out of where I'm living because it's just too expensive. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, they're just like I have friends who are in uh, Ottawa, Toronto, like all over the place, just not where I am. Just because, like here, it's just you know it's the East Coast, and there's a lot of people who it's kind of like a spot where like a lot of guys get grandfathered into things, like um, you know, like it's like your dad's an electrician, so you're gonna be one type of deal. Yeah, yeah and if you don't have that. Uh, it can be a little bit difficult. And the majority of people that I graduated with, like if I just look as a whole, um, are living with their parents, you know? Like there's not a lot of people here who are moved out like me. You know, when people see me with like a car moved out, like already, like people are like, oh my God, like how do you afford that? That's crazy. Because like here, everyone's just living with their parents, drinking still, just chilling. So I think we're at like, we're, see, we're at like different ages because like I'm like turning what I'm turning like 24 this year. Yeah. And uh, so I'm still at that age where like people are still like living with their parents, kind of getting away with it. But I'm I think people are still doing that. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that's just to me, that's like a little bit wild and crazy. But I mean, it's just the world that we live in. Right. Like there are a lot of people who are, you know, stuck tough times and I feel bad for them don't get me wrong but um it's just like when I look out and I look around you know there are you know there's like a small percentage that are out on their own chilling a large percentage is like still with their parents still you know doing that which is fine but um yeah no it's 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 wild like when I kind of like look out you know at like some of like my my friends and ask them how they're doing because like you know, like, I, I know one guy who I was with, like, a couple months ago, and he's like, oh, check out my new place, check out my new place, so I was like, oh, wow, you got a place, like, that's dope, that's awesome, and then we started driving, and started driving a little bit more, and driving a little bit more, and I was like, fuck, like, where are we going, 
and we took this like dirt road and then like in the in woods it was like this trailer and i was like holy fuck boys but you know what can you what can you fucking do i guess the reality is like the wages aren't aren't speeding speeding up to the point of uh cost of inflation and like cost of of goods right because again it's just it's it's really hard and i don't see that changing in the short term right so like what actually scares me the most is like in the short term, yeah, a lot of people are going to be living <laughs> in paycheck to paycheck. Um, yeah. Anyone who's overspent, like even people, I know people who make a million dollars a year who live paycheck to paycheck, which is mind blowing. So it's not only just a, a yeah. person people who make less money's issue. It's a, all people who <laughs> are overspenders. Um, my g- biggest concern though, is just the, the lower and the middle class are going to fall really far behind because they don't have the money to invest. Like right now, like we're talking about meta, Tesla, my uh, Microsoft, Amazon are all beaten down stocks, and right now I'm scooping up what I can, right? Because long term, it's great, it's great, and it's going to build wealth. The problem is these people don't have that capability, so they're just going to continuously fall behind. So the next decade, really, I mean, I don't see how these people change and get out of this like rut unless they hit the lottery, you know. And, and even and that's just that's the reality. And I think I think the problem is the economy is not going to change. Um, you know, I, I think spending's going way down because people literally can't afford it. So yeah. no. And like, I don't mean to laugh. It's just a funny oh, yeah. story where my buddy's like, I got this new place. It's fucking awesome. Come see it. And then we go and show up and it's a trailer. And I'm like, oh shit. Like, this is like really the state of the times where we're at, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it, it does kind of suck because like, if he was like, you know, it, like he he paid, I think, like 60 or 70 K for it. Like it wasn't yeah. cheap. Yeah. You know? Like even yeah. like, I mean, like, yeah, like I was kind of like just like joking because like, I mean, to me, it was just like, fuck, like you don't expect to like, you know, go there. But like, it's like shit, like that kind of opened my eyes. Like this is kind of the state that we're living in. Like there are a yeah. lot of people in our age group that it's like, what are they going to do? Like. Often I'm just like driving and thinking like, shit, like what if I didn't have trading? Like what the fuck would I be doing? Like, I'd be fucked. I think, about that I think about that often because if I wasn't trading, I mean, I would, I would have the, the barbershops and like I make a good living off of it. But but in my head, like I would be stressing because it'd be really hard to get ahead. Um, yeah. Just off of that alone, you know, you almost need multiple incomes or one really, really good income to be able to get ahead and, and to push yourself forward. And I almost feel like I almost I often wonder if this is what the depression was felt like, where like just people weren't able to to really like start their lives or move forward or get caught up or get ahead or any of that. And like, like I said, it's like my friends, I hear them all the time, like people like not just my friend, but people I know like saying like, oh, I wish I could move out of my parents. Oh, I wish I could buy a house or I need a car, but I can't afford it. I mean, we, we did um, I did a bunch of interviews with different barbers over the past week. And half of them don't have cars right now because they're broken and they can't afford to, the cars are broken and they can't afford to fix it. Right. So like there's more to the economy and more to the stock market than just like people like us and like the people who are very blessed and lucky to have this. And that's why long-term I just, I can't imagine us coming, being out of a recession anytime soon. Again, I don't know what that means for stocks. I I still think, I mean, I I've been following a lot of these like chart chart guys and, and we're actually starting to see a lot of people turn bullish on stocks um so it's funny i mean we're, we're we we have a very good bull and bear battle right now between people yeah. who think we can continue up or if we're gonna see new lows yeah it's very very hard for me like i'm not i'm not investing any money right now yeah. like i'm just i'm just waiting because it's like it's too uncertain you know i'd rather just be able to be one of those kind of like add to the dip guys you know mm-hmm. like um you know, like I had some money invested like before COVID and like I had done like a couple different things like that. But for me right now, it's like, fuck, like I just picture myself like losing with that, like hide the pain Harold, because it's like shit, you know, eventually I do want to buy a house like in the next like two years. So, um, you know, I mean, it's just like, for me, it's like, shit, do I want to put that money at risk? Like, yeah. mm, no, not, right. not really. And then I have to pay tax on it again. And then I have to, it's like, I have to pay, I'm, I'm paying tax on the money that I've been taxed on before. So it's like, fuck, 
you Everyone know. has priority, man. I mean, like some people value um, value where they live. So some people value their their future and their like their stock uh, portfolio. Uh, some people value stuff, right? And I always tell people like you can't invest money. Like I know you can afford to lose it. I'm not saying I, but you. But I tell people all the time you can't buy Amazon at eighty bucks if you're afraid it's going to go to seventy five. Yeah. You know, so and that's it. And it's like, you know, most people you're saving for a house and you're saving for your future. You don't want to invest that money. Like yeah. the guy had a bunch, he, he bought it, he bought Apple at 130. Um, and then he sold it at like 125 because it, he was stressed out and he's like, Oh, I needed the cash. And I'm like, Well, you know, why the hell are you investing money you don't have? You right. know, it's like you just it's like I said, everyone has a priority and yeah. And with me, be- like I can buy a house right now, but like I, I want to buy like, you know, a decent like fucking place where I don't have to put down like 10% or 5% and have like yeah. worry about these big ass fucking payments. Like for me, yeah. I just want to have a nice enough place. And for here, that's going to be probably close to like a million bucks, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. like, because I mean, anything else like is like fucking shit. So that's why I'm like, shit, do I want to take this money and invest it in fucking meta and Amazon and this shit? Or should I just fucking put this here and ride it the fuck out, you know? Yeah. Well, you're trying to buy another kind of asset, which is, I think, fantastic, you know, but speak, and what kind of transition actually now that we're, we're getting into ourselves, but how has uh, small caps been for you to start tw- end 2022 and start 2023? Pretty good. Like around, I'd say like the end of like November, I started kind of like transitioning to like the multi-day runner type of deal. Yep. And I've been having like huge success with that. Like. Yeah, like the day ones, I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I used to be a day one person for a long time. Used to love day ones. But to me, the multi-day runners, like, I don't know what it is, but they just like kind of like speak to me where I'm just like, fuck, like, I understand this. I I get this set up. I see it. And then I just, you know, trade them and do pretty well. And so it's been difficult for me to say, okay, do I want to go back to day ones? Like the day ones are just very choppy. They're hard. You know, if you don't have a pre-market short like you guys, like you and Bear and like the fucking boys, um, you know, I mean, like imagine if you were only able to trade at the open, you know, and you didn't have a pre-market short, you know, it'd be very difficult because it's like shit. Um, You know, if you trade at least short, middle of the range, you're going to get fucked. If you trade long, middle of the range, it's 50-50 coin flip right there. Right. Yeah. Your short edge is really outer lines. Your long edge is really outer lines to kind of the bottom, bottom of the range. By the time it gets there, I'm like, shit, you know, and I get the market conditions. I understand it. But it's been choppy for so long. And when I have these multi-day runners that I can really attack and like make a lot of money on, I'm like, shit, like, why do I even bother with the day ones anymore? Like, just leave it to the shorts and then I'll just you know, take these multi-day runners and fucking nail them, you know, like, and there's been a lot, like, you know, some stocks that bought it, like, you know, four bucks, three bucks, sold them at five, you know, so it's like, if I can just keep doing this, and this can like keep working, um, I'll probably just not trade the day ones anymore, because the multi-day has just been so much better. Yep. And I mean, I feel, I feel like you have a real edge there. And you kind of, t- we were talking about that actually funny enough, like six months ago that you were starting to dabble in that. Um, and it, it's nice that you found like a real nice edge and you always have the day ones to fall back on. Yeah. But I almost feel like with day one longs, like sometimes it's like an adrenaline junkie thing because it's like, you need that like boom, boom, like action. Yeah. And like, that's what, like a lot of people are looking for. And I think it, I think it's hard because the market still has a lot of enough participants that I think make it harder for long traders. Yeah. Um, you're dealing with amateur selling and like stuff like that. So I think it's pretty good that you found this like new, new niche that like really works, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and I just was going to add one more thing is that when I started trading these and the market opened, I was like, what the fuck? Like, like I didn't have any day ones on my screen. I just took the day ones off because I knew that I'd be distracted by it. And so I open it up and I'm looking around here and I'm like, what the fuck? You know, what's going on? You know, like, it's like kind of like slamming the table, like, let's go, let's go, you know, got to be something. But you realize, like, as a long trader, like, how kind of stuff is supposed to be, you know, like, don't get me wrong, made a lot of money day ones, but it's not the most, like, especially long, too. I feel like you're like two times the stress 
because you're always worried if you're going to get dumped on, you know, you're always going to have that in like shorting. Yes. You're worried about getting squeezed like hundred percent. Like that's, that's an issue. I'll agree with that. But you know, as far as longing goes, like it's kind of like a bit more exaggerated of a fear because I've done both. And for me, it was just like, you know, I wasn't that worried about getting dumped on, on these. Um, it wasn't that like adrenaline at all. Like it's very, very like peaceful type of setup. And, you know, every day this week, I've, there's been one that has ran. So, and that's why I said like HKD, I had on my watch list at fucking 10 bucks before yeah. this whole run, the day before the shit ran, I had it on my watch list. And then obviously went crazy, went to like 60 pre-market today, went nuts. Um, <laughs> But when it was like, it's becoming like a theme in like my watches where like the stocks that I'm watching are turning into these runners are turning into these stocks that are like the masses are trading. That's when I was like, okay, I know that I do have an edge here for sure. Because um, like, like the majority of stocks on my watch list will go up, but it all comes down to as well, like what's going to get the volume, what's going to happen the, you know, chart pattern and stuff like that. So for me, it's like, you gotta, you're going to have like six on your watch list. One of those, one of them is going to work. It's going to fucking blow it out of the park. So you just have to be patient enough and wait for that. And that's what I mean. Like when the market opened and I was looking around here and I was like, what the fuck? Like, do I do this? Do I do that? And then I just kind of sat back. I waited, waited for like my lines to hit, you know, ticker just keeps going up. You know, and that was like great for me. And I was talking to a couple other long traders that I know in MIC. And I was like, fuck, it feels like I'm retired. You know, like the shit just works. I'm not stressed. It's consistent. You know, I'm not worried about uh, fucking this day one runner, you know, stuffing. I There's like no adrenaline in the morning at all. You know, it's very, very calm. It's very less stressful. And I think for me, it's just my girlfriend's like, wow, you're not really that angry often. Like you haven't been drinking that much. You've just been like, just so chill. And I was like, fuck, it's just the multi-day runners. Like I'm making more money, but I'm just less stressed. I'm just That's chilling. True. And that has been the key for me. That was the biggest lesson that I think of last year. And like this year, like this last six months, the biggest lesson for me has been just if you can find a strategy where you're not stressed and yeah. you're not like that adrenaline of like shorting high a day or like longing or to stock, hoping that you're right and you yeah. can just chill and sit back, that's the best thing that you can do. Great, bro. Agreed. I mean, 2022 for me was fucking brutal. I mean, it was a it's fine trading wise, but it was just a mental battle. It was a, such a grind every single day. Um, I mean, Every, there were we went through three to four months where like the strategy that had worked for years was not working at all like it was just a headache or it would work but by the time it worked you got cut up so many times that it wasn't even worth it and it was tough man and like you know the group of guys i trade with we tried different strategies that were a little crazy um we tried over perfecting a system sometimes to make it almost too perfect to the point where it wouldn't work and then we did everything bro we dealt with some really lows and i i it was the first time i like to be honest that I was like, dude, I'm so sick of trading. I got so mad at it like so many times, but like, it's such a, obviously a passion. So I always came back and, and then it's like, it clicked. Like, I don't know the end, the last three months of 2022, things were really working really well. There wasn't still yet a great amount of range, but like the, the setups were working. And then I came into this week, right to 2023 and just like every single day executed the shit out of everything I wanted to. And it, paid really it paid really well and it, it worked and it's like it felt like a year of stress and trial really came to like uh i don't know it just it came to like be worth it all for even just this one week where it just like financially was like wow you know so so th i'm i'm happy to see where 2023 is going um and i feel like given the this new volatility and in, in the range that we have i think it's you know it's i'm, I'm conservative but i i like to think that we're in for a good year um, you know, I think, I think we're getting there, but I know we're coming up, uh, kind of on that, like 30, 40 yeah. minute mark, but I kind of want to, before we go, actually, I want to ask, would you have any, uh, new year's resolutions this year? Not really, to be honest. I mean, my new year's resolutions has always been like, just try and be the best that you can be, you know, like for me, if I'm like, if I set goals, like, especially if it's like, oh, like I, 
you know, I want to lose weight or I want to do this or I want to do that. Like for me, it just like, they never happen. So I think like, I, you know, you always need that kind of like internal push. I feel like, you know, yeah. instead of just sitting down and saying, Oh, well, I'm going to do dry January, you know, yeah. you know, like, I mean, that's all well and good, but it's like, to me, that just puts too much pressure on myself where it's like, like the last time I drank was like before I had COVID, you know, yeah. which is crazy to me because like, I mean, like I used to drink all the time, but like now I'm just like chilling and I'm like, shit, <laughs> it's been like, uh, you know, since like two weeks now or like close to yeah. it. So yeah. it's like, it's always those type of deals where it's like, if you're not, if I'm, if I don't force myself to do something, then I'll like, I'll do it. And if I have to force myself, then like, I'm going to have a lot more resentment. So you know, I always try and like, I don't know, it sounds weird. I like, I don't set the goal in stone, but I'm like, okay, I'm going to like work towards this. And like, if I fail, I can always restart. Yeah. So that way I'm not like, I feel like, like, you know, if you're like, I'm quitting drinking, I'm quitting drinking today. All you're going to think about is fucking drinking, you know, like you're going to like, whether you're an alcoholic or not, you're going to be like, oh, I could be drinking right now, you yeah. know? For sure. or, or like whatever you know like junk food or whatever but if i had set like kind of like half a goal and i work towards it i always have a lot more like better success like doing that so like you know that's right. what i guess what i've been trying to do just like for me it's always been like just like drink as less as i can and just try and be as healthy as i can and like that's all i can really do i like that man yeah i mean i agree actually i really like that because i feel like if you make it too much of a of a, a goal it becomes too much of a focus and for some people that actually leads them down the wrong path yeah. um uh, you know for me this year like my goal um i want to be like the healthiest person that i can like i'm that's a big focus of mine is, is overall health um my diet everything's always been pretty good um uh, but i definitely want to make sure i'm exercising the four to five days um i'm trying to invest in some some sort of technology things to kind of help me track my health overall. Yeah, I saw you were looking at the uh, cock ring 3000. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Like I, you know, so like stuff to just make myself better overall and like how I can like incrementally like work on that. Yeah. Um, I am trying to drink way less in this year. Um, I want to have, I like I was wording it to a, a friend today that I want to have like a healthier relationship with alcohol, meaning like I want to like drink to enjoy it. Like I like buying, buying like fun bottles of wine, like something intricate and cool to try. And that's like what I'll do, but I'm not just going yeah. to drink, you know, and then Monday through Friday, absolutely not. Or Monday through Thursday, I'll say I won't, I won't drink at all. Um, because I want to also on trading, I want to come to the trading desk every day, fully ready and, and yeah. able to execute at the highest level. So, yeah. um, so that's my goal, man. And I feel like, I feel like we're both on the path of, you know. Yeah, I feel like we both have the same goals. Like, we both talked about it an awful lot, yep. just, like, over text, where it's just, like, yep. I don't want to be coming to the fucking setup hungover. I don't want to be coming, you know, with, like, lack of sleep or, you know, whatever. I just want to be just focused and ready to attack and just put myself in the best position to do that. And, like, I feel like we've we've been talking, like, an awful lot about that, you know, recently, like, over the past couple months, and I feel like, you know, for both of us, it's really just, you know, just working hard for the, you know, just to do that every day and just put us in the best position to kind of like execute and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, absolutely, man. I think, um, I think that's great. I'm excited to see where we take 2023. Yeah, bro. Me too. Yeah. Oh yeah. But I mean, yeah, I think we can kind of wrap it up. There. Wrap that up. All right. Yeah. Uh, nice podcast, James. And yeah, uh, nice, yeah, we'll see everyone uh, for the next one.